Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about everything that changed with Season 3. So, we're going to skip the obvious, right? We're going to skip the map, because we know that's there. We're going to skip the new legend. We're going to talk about the notes. So if you want a video on the legend or on the map, those are coming soon. But first, we're going to cover this patch note video. So, first off, you have your battle pass. That bad boy is going to cost 950 coins, or you can get the Battle Pass Bundle, which is going to be 2,800 Apex coins, which, you know, that automatically unlocks 25 levels of the Battle Pass, and you get the Iced Out Pathfinder skin immediately. So, other than that, we're skipping right in here to these big changes. So, have you ever wanted to use your finisher, but you wanted it to have an actual point to it other than just a nice animation because we both know that it's super risky to throw down in a finisher in the middle of a fight well now there's a reason to do so so before you had to have the gold armor to you know whenever you finish somebody and you were wearing the gold armor then it replenished your shields well that's no longer the case starting with season three all legends will have this perk meaning that if you do a finisher on an enemy your shields fully recharge regardless if you've got the gold armor or not also gold backpacks will now have a guardian angel perk with the guardian angel perk you will now revive down teammates with bonus health and shields if they've got armor on and not only with that but the gold armor has also changed. Now it has a fast use, which means consumable items will take half as long to use. So the perk that was on the gold backpack shifted to the gold armor because the perk that was on the gold armor shifted to every legend, and now the gold backpack has a new perk. So now the gold armor has a point. You know, like, the people are... I don't know, ignorant, whenever they see somebody with gold armor before, you know, they shoot them and be like, oh, that guy's got gold, we gotta take him out first, when really it's the same thing as purple, like, that guy can just finish you and get his shields back, but that's probably not gonna happen. But now when you see somebody, somebody with gold armor, you know that when you shoot them, they can heal quicker now. So that, in my opinion, is a very useful little piece of information for you. Like, it's at first, it sounds really good, because it makes the gold armor useful, but secondly, you as the attacker, if you're attacking somebody with gold armor and you shoot them and you see those gold numbers, you know for a fact that guy can heal faster. That might make you push them a little bit quicker. And I agree with that. I like that change. There's a new weapon added to the mix. It is called the charge rifle. The three years, it's so the charge time. rifle is going to shoot a little laser at first uh, while it charges up. And that actually does a little bit of damage to someone, but the real damage comes whenever the charge rifle is fully charged and you pop somebody with it, and that's going to deal a lot of damage according to the notes. And uh, if you didn't know, the charge rifle is part of the standard loot pool and can be found all over the map. So here's another weapon that's going to get nerfed later. But honestly, I think it's super cool. I don't like so here's the uh, the changes that we got going on here for our legends. So Gibraltar, his dome shield, players in the dome shield use healing items 25% faster. They've also increased the throw distance by 60%. But they have increased the cooldown from 20 dude, seconds to 30 seconds. The defensive bombardment ah, now has a decreased no, cooldown you, of four and a half minutes to three minutes, oh, baby. and the duration of it has been slowed, has been shortened from eight seconds to six seconds. And you can now throw that bad boy 36 percent further than you could before. So that's some big changes to Gibraltar right there, being able to heal in the dome. That is fantastic. Like that, that just that puts a whole nother meta really on the dome, and people wanting to run Gibraltar. Like he's already a tank, and he's already ridiculous. Now you're giving him this extra couple of perks. Like that's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't main Gibraltar myself, but if I did, I'd be super excited. Bloodhound has a few changes here. 
thing they know. He, the Eye of the Allfather, they reduced the animation time to activate by 33%, which is really useful. And now it immediately tells you how many targets have been pinged. That's pretty cool. Beast of the Hunt, now they've fixed an issue with the field of view scaling messing up with your ADS aim sensitivity. And they also reduced the animation time to activate by 30%. They then increase the movement speed from 25 to 30%. So, that's pretty useful. My girl Bangalore, she's got a little bit of a buff coming in. Her Rolling Thunder now does 40 damage. And thank you. Thank you for this, Respawn. If I wanted anything and what hurt Bangalore the most is that her ult didn't do anything. Like, yeah, you slowed somebody, but by the time everything cleared, like, they were gone. And they, you know, you'd only done 20 damage, so they had already gotten out of there. But now it's going to 40. So if you can catch somebody, honestly, I wish they would have decreased, like, the Probably launch time of it. Improved. You know, like, I feel like once you throw it and... Then... Should have been immediate, but it's still pretty slow. But now that it does 40 damage, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a few more Bangalores out there. Uh, with Octane, they fixed an issue with his uh, field of view scaling, messing up with the ADS sensitivity. With Wraith, the dimensional rift no longer deploys if you were down before placing it. So, basically... If you were setting a portal and you're running through there and you get down while trying to place the portal before your portal would get placed. Now, no longer gets placed. I, I'm mixed on that because I kind of feel like, you know, so everyone else is ult. Like, if they throw it and you down them, it still happens. And Wraiths is just a... I don't know. I don't know if I like that, but I'm also biased to Wraith because I'm kind of a Wraith main. Um, so, you know. Baby. Pathfinder, his grapple has been reduced. The grapple projectile velocity is has been reduced by 33%, meaning that it takes a fraction of a second longer to, to connect the grapple to the wall. But once you connect to the wall, the behavior is the same. The zip line, dang, its cooldown has been increased. It's gone from 90 seconds to 120 seconds. So no more zipping all over the map like we used to. So weapons and loot have uh, changed a little bit here. So I've got some bad news for people who enjoyed the disruptor rounds, and I've got bad news for people who enjoyed the skull piercer. They're gone. They removed them. Now, in all reality... They do mention that there is a possibility of them returning because they want to rotate the hop-ups each season. So right now, Disruptor Rounds and the Skull Piercer are gone. Now, with the Skull Piercer hop-up leaving, the Wingman has received a base of 2.15 when it comes to hitting somebody in the head. Any DMR, which was 2.0 before, is now 2.15. So, they're trying to balance a little bit with your Skull Piercer. Now, we've got a few new hop-ups, which are definitely going to change the meta of the game. The first new hop-up is the Anvil Receiver. It attaches to the Flatline and the R301. It is a level 4, which is gold. And the hop-up empowers a semi-automatic mode. And it offers highly increased damage, but at the cost of reduced rate of fire and double ammo per shot. So that could be a pretty decent trade-off, and it's going to be useful for you if you can hit your shots. So that really keeps the flatline and the R301 in the conversation when it comes to what's the better weapon to use. And definitely going to take the cake when it comes to mid to you know further range. Obviously, once you get up to short range, probably still not going to be that useful. But it also depends on how fast we can pop those bullets off. Because if it's a semi-auto like the Hemlock is, that would be nice. Now, the next hop-up introduced is called the Double Tap Trigger. And it can attach to the G7 Scout and the EVA 8. It is a level 3, which is purple. And the hop-up makes each trigger pull fire a quick two-round burst. So for the G7 Scout, that makes the Scout a weapon. Like, it seems like the meta's changing a little bit to pull you some 
from such you know close engagements to more of mid range, or giving the people who already operated at mid range give you a little bit more firepower. Because honestly, so the G7 Scout having a two round burst, I think that is ingenious. That's nice. The Eva 8 having a two round burst. Oh, I don't know, man. Like that sounds crazy. But we're gonna just we're just gonna have to see where it goes. There also has been a change to the ultimate accelerance. The ultimate accelerance charge has now increased from 20% to 35%. However, the they have reduced the amount that's in the world by about 40%. So that's almost half. So you know how you see ultimate accelerance all, all over the place? You won't anymore. Which could be useful for the loot. Now, let's talk about weapons. Man. This is going to hurt some people. So the R99 has lost some bullets. So the base magazine size for the R99 remains the same. However, the bullet count that it receives when you have a mag for it is now different. It looks, honestly, it looks a lot closer to the alternator. So now you're going to get 18... Normally, 20 with the gray mag, 23 with the blue, 27 with the purple. So they've dropped it basically three bullets per mag. And they've now also added some, some recoil randomness to the patterns. So apparently whoever made that chart with all the recoils has some work to do. Now, with the Prowler, they've added some more slight recoil while maintaining the same pattern when fired in full auto mode. So kind of makes you you know still want to use it a little bit as a burst you know you don't have to use it in the burst mode but maybe not light it up like okay. you used to the longbow's rate of fire has been reduced instead of going from 1.6 it's now at 1.3 the leg damage multiplier has now been reduced from 0.9 to 0.8 the G7 Scout has received a buff. Its base damage has been increased from 30 to 34. So now not only do you do four more damage per shot, but you also have a double tap mod for this gun now. So the G7 Scout is being brought into relevancy. The Hemlock, it's like it got a punch in, but then it also lost a punch. So they've increased the base damage of the Hemlock from 18 to 22, which sounds really nice on paper but they've slightly decreased the rate of fire to both fire modes. So how much that is it, it how much that is exactly? Uh, we're going to see. But I like that it got a buff to 22. I love that thing on semi auto and just spamming it, but I guess that's uh that's not the case anymore. So the Mozambique has technically received some buffs, it seems. The they have decreased the pattern spread. And the Mozambique will now reset from recoil faster, which should make it a little bit easier for you to track targets and see where the shots landed, you know, because everyone keeps the Mozambique. The L-Star has received a substantial reduction in horizontal recoil, and now it comes equipped with the 1X digital threat optic. And it has, however, lost some damage. Instead of doing 21 per bullet, it now does 19. I like the changes to the L-Star, but I, I don't like the damage change. I don't ever like damage changes, you know, like you buff all these weapons and then it's like, no. Uh, now we've got some some new fully kitted gold weapons that are going to be out there. It's going to include all three, all tier three versions of the compatible attachments, the hop-up, and the following optics. So the flatline, there's now a gold flatline. It includes the one to two optic. There's a gold EVA 8 out there with the gold with a 1x threat scope. There's a gold triple take that has a 4 to 10 scope. There is a gold G7 with the 2 to 4 optics. And then there's a gold charge rifle with the 4 to 10 threat scope. I personally hate the 4 to 10 threat scope, but that's just me. I'm sure it'll be nice if you want to snipe, but I feel like whenever they do that with the gold weapons, they sort of limit who's going to want to pick them up. I don't have but hey, ammo. that's still pretty nice. So there's a lot of quality of life changes here. So first they added a random option for customizing your unlocked load screens. Thank you. You know, I don't like seeing the same load screen every time. So I like that there's a few options. 
Now they've expanded the ping wheel so that you can now equip your unlocked intro and kill quips, which I think is great. So <laughs> you can equip up to eight uh, intro or kill quips. I love that. Like, Because, you know, you could just be talking the whole time. Now, nearby enemies can hear your quips when activated, so you just want to keep that in mind. This is kind of like the division now when you're in the dark zone. You can press Y or, you know, uh, F1 on your keyboard or, you know, R1 for PS4. And it's going to bring up the ping wheel to access it. To access the celebrate is now a quick chat. It's now the first option in the quip wheel, which that used to be the down on the D-pad. So... At least they're going to keep that in there. There is a new Legend Battle Chatter, which Legends now have voice lines that will call out when your squad is being third-partied. Uh, it's triggered if you take damage when recently damaged by another living squad. So that's pretty cool. Like, at least they're letting you know, hey, bro, you're being third-partied now. You can equip multiple skydive emotes, which is nice. Daily challenges should only give you... At most, one challenge for a legend you don't know, yeah. you don't own. There are no duplicate character daily challenges, which is useful and terrible at the same time. Because uh, you know, if you if you like to do your daily challenges and you can get them all with one character, it's nice. They have fixed the slowdown or performance drops at the start of the match. Mirage decoys will now go where directed when deploying them during the drop if Mirage isn't the jump master. Lifeline's DOC drone will no longer float away after being deployed on supply ships. That's great. They also fixed an issue where legends could show up as locked instead of selected when joining a match late. And there have been small improvements across the user interface to make fonts and other elements more readable. And whenever you're swapping weapons with one on the ground, attachments will now attempt to transfer to your stored weapon in addition to the weapon you are about to pick up. So, if I'm reading that correctly, when swapping your weapons with one on the ground, attachments will now attempt to transfer to your stowed weapon in addition to the weapon you're about to pick up. So, if I'm reading that correctly, you're going to take whatever you have, your attachments, and if you switch it, and if the attachment can't fit on that weapon, then it's going to shift to your stored weapon, which is super useful because before, like if you had a... Like, let's say you had a flatline with an extended mag, and you had a wingman with no mag in your pocket, and then you picked up an EVA 8, that mag would just drop on the ground. But now that mag should automatically equip to that wingman, and I like that. I really wish they'd fix that interface, because I feel like it's still a little wonky, though. Yeah. There have been several bug fixes. Uh, Octane... They fixed a bug for him when sometimes maintaining uh, his tactical, it stopped players from being able to perform other actions until the tactical was finished. Watson has got a bug fix to where sometimes the visual effects from her fences wouldn't show up after being deployed. Pathfinder's got a bug fixed with his insider knowledge passive where the survey beacons would disappear from the full map after I'm activating them. They also fixed a bug right where now. players could sometimes yeah, receive right. additional battle pass rewards by leveling up two games in a row. Oh, they fixed an exploit that allowed players to spam fire with the peacekeeper. They fixed a bug where looting lifelines care packages would not count towards the loot X amount of care packages in the battle pass challenges. That's nice. And they also fixed a bug. Players could sometimes skip the landing animation after a long fall. And they fixed a bug where sometimes map fog visual effects would disappear while looting a death box. They also rebalanced audio to address issues with footsteps, zip lines, and jump jets. So all those seem really nice. They also fixed a bug where sometimes the smoke visual from Gibraltar, Bangalore, and Caustic's ultimates would show up on scopes when swapping weapons rapidly. So I'm glad that they fixed that. And I've already got a video out for Rank Series 2, so if you haven't seen that yet, make sure to check that out. And everything else will be covered in another video. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. If you're excited about this, if you're frustrated about some changes, what do you like about this, what do you hate about it? And if you could, smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.
So you know when it, how it does like his their little intro walk and everything? Like <laughs> he just 